We just received a chilling warning from the FBI, and to make matters worse, many analysts are saying that it's now too late. For years, many different nationalities have been coming through our southern border. Texas has fought to keep dangerous people off of American soil, but with the resources that they have, they can only do so much. We see different people here, some coming from Brazil, Nicaragua, Venezuela, Cuba, Ecuador, and even China. Those two last ones are very crucial for what we're about to talk about today. Hey guys, before we get into it, I just want to thank you guys for always taking a second and dropping a quick like for the video. It really means the world to me and for always sharing my videos, it totally, totally helps out the channel. You have no idea. So I just want to thank you guys so much for that. So what's happening, right? Well, right now the threat in Texas is slowly going down. Why? Well, because Texas through Governor Greg Abbott has cracked down on illegal immigrants that are just basically entering the United States. Abbott, together with multiple governors across the entire state, are now fed up with the influx of people coming through the southern border. And this has caused stricter measures, pushing people away from the state. In December last year, 250,000 migrant apprehensions were recorded in the southern border. Fast forward to earlier this year, that number is now down to 125,000. And so that number continues to go down as Texas pushes to fight for the American people. It's now escalated to a point where the Texas National Guard has fortified a huge two and a half mile section of the border with layers of razor, concertina wire, and even shipping containers. And that's not the end of it, guys. Reports are now showing that illegal immigrants are avoiding Texas altogether, and they're opting to enter through other different pathways. So two spots are now becoming an attraction for them because of their leniency. So one is Lukeville, Arizona, and the other one is Jacoba Hot Springs, California. Just for the week ending February 4th, Border Patrol said that they averaged 1,816 daily migrant apprehensions in the Tucson sector. Now the average for San Diego within the same period was 1,213, with both of them being combined they would make up almost 60% of the daily apprehensions for that week. Meanwhile, the Del Rio sector in Texas are seeing a few hundred apprehensions a day. They even record around 200 per day. Now, while this shows that what Texas is doing is actually working for them, it's not actually going to mean that much if places like Arizona and California are just wide open, right? These spots are now becoming much more popular with illegal immigrants, the same way that Ecuador is popular for Chinese nationals. The capital for Ecuador, Quito, has documented documented around 13,000 Chinese nationals coming through in 2022. By 2023, that number ballooned to 45,000. Now, the reason is that Ecuador doesn't require visas for Chinese nationals. All they need is their passport. And as you might have guessed, the area has fast become a spot for people who want to enter the United States through our borders. They're now so used to receiving Chinese nationals that their bus stops actually have signs in Chinese. Can you believe that? One sign reads that it's set to drop people off at the Columbia border. There are also businesses within the area that have Chinese nationals working for them. And not just that, guys, but some of them have even set up their own businesses by providing gear and goods for the trek that people will be going on. There are also Chinese-run establishments for food, for housing, and a place to connect with other Chinese nationals in hopes of making their way to the United States together. So, you know, there's actually one hostel there that has printed out Chinese language maps and instructions pasted on the wall detailing every leg of the trip. To date, it's estimated that Quito has around 100 small businesses that cater to Chinese nationals. This former English teacher from China calls herself Millie. In 2019, she arrived in Ecuador and now works with immigrants from China. I think 80%, 90% of the people who choose to leave China do so because they have a sense of fear living in that society. That fear continues for those living outside of China because many immigrants still have family back home. That's why Millie is using only her first name. She's helped hundreds of people from China relocate to Ecuador, ranging from the mega rich to the middle class. She says economic and political uncertainty are the main reasons why some Chinese choose to emigrate. Many of my clients are afraid their renminbi will turn into trash, so they exchange all the RMB for dollars and stash them at home. Some are afraid China is going back to the planned economy, especially for their generation who have experienced those dark days. They're afraid their property will be confiscated. They tell me you think your properties are yours, but are they really yours? Now, 
The FBI director, Christopher Wray, he has warned about potential havoc that could be caused by Chinese hackers entering the United States. The hackers are expected to be targeted toward critical infrastructure here in the country. The problem is that the expectation is that it's not going to be limited to just internal hacks. We've discussed earlier as to how more Chinese nationals are now trying to get into our country. But the FBI has recently discovered that through the help of TikTok, more of them are now coming in. That's right, guys. So the social app TikTok is enabling Chinese citizens to make their way all the way from China to our borders. In fact, there are even step-by-step -step instructions on the app as to how they can do this. So just last year, U.S. Customs and Border Protection reported around 37,000 Chinese citizens being apprehended at the as they illegally crossed through our borders. Now that number is 50 times more than what was recorded only two years prior. And it's not to say that the United States hasn't tried to have these folks return home. In fact, there are at least 36,000 Chinese nationals that have been told to leave the country. But that's easier said than done because China is now outright refusing to let these same people back into their country. China doesn't want them back. And of course, the United States can't force China to accept them. Now, to give you guys a good idea as to how many are now here in the country, in 2023, 55% of Chinese migrants were granted asylum. That number is by far enormous compared to the 14% of migrants that came from other countries. Now, this raises a lot of concerns with the FBI. It also creates tension and fear among Americans as it is no secret that China has time and time again tried to attack our infrastructure through the internet. Now, here's the big one, folks. Reports are now coming out that Chinese hackers have secretly been hiding in the United States infrastructure for the last five years. That's right, guys. Six U.S. agencies confirmed this warning and said that a potential cyber attack will probably happen under a couple of possibilities. And so one is that the United States goes directly to war with China. The other is if China invades Taiwan. President Joe Biden has said, that he will put boots on the ground for Taiwan. Now, this means that if an invasion happens in Asia, then we should probably expect our critical infrastructure to be destroyed at the same time. That is what many agencies are worried about, and it's now becoming a bigger concern for many who are here in our country. But what is the Biden administration saying about this possibility? Just recently, we heard that the president is now considering executive action to deter illegal immigration at the southern border. The bipartisan bill that includes funding for both Ukraine and Israel, as well as funding for the border, may not be arriving on the president's desk anytime soon. Democrats and the White House are now saying that Republicans are trying to shoot the bill down, which in turn uh, ultimately has the president deflecting the blame toward none other than former President Donald Trump. And so Biden is now saying that the influx of illegal immigrants should be blamed on Trump. They're also saying that the this executive action was more of like a plan B. They, however, they did not share any kind of details as to what they're going to be doing. This has critics ultimately slamming the president because it relays or it actually raises a couple of questions. Eh, may, maybe one real valid question. If he already knew that he had the power of executive action, that he could help the borders, then why didn't he just do it sooner? Now, your guess is as good as mine, but as far as I know, there are threats that still continue to come into the United States through our borders. But what are you guys' thoughts on this? Now, as always, you know, I do my best to keep you guys informed about updates like this that definitely impact our lives on a daily basis. Before I go, I just want to thank you guys for being here. Thanks for liking the video. Thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you on the next one.